Hello students, in this lecture we are going to see the sexual reproduction in angiosperm, higher plants or phanerogans because already we have studied asexual reproduction as well as vegetative propagation. In the third section we are going to see this sexual reproduction in higher plants or angiosperms. Now as far as sexual reproduction is concerned in phanerogans or in angiosperm it involves formation and fusion of two compatible sex cells generally we call them as a gamete and that is very important aspect of sexual reproduction it involves two parents one the male and the other one the female and both male and female parents they produce highly specialized reproductive cells generally they are referred as gametes or sex cells as far as sexual reproduction is concerned it become possible only after attending maturity, sexual maturity or puberty because as far as the growth is concerned it is completed in two phases. The first one it is called as vegetative growth and the second one it is called as reproductive growth. Once the plant complete vegetative growth then it is available for reproductive growth and then the sexual reproduction can be practiced. As far as higher plants are concerned sexual maturity can easily be marked recognized by formation of floral bud and blossoming of the flower. A highly specialized nature of reproduction in angiosperm is that they produce the flowers and that flower production actually it starts from the floral bud and floral bud once they develop they will blossom into the flower. Then if we see a flower, the perfect technical definition of flower you have to remember and a flower is defined as highly condensed and modified shoot specially for sexual reproduction. Mind it well, a flower is given the status of shoot, highly condensed and highly modified specially for sexual reproduction. Basic function of flower if we see to ensure sexual reproduction and how is it possible? It is possible by producing gametes as well as their dispersal to the compatible parent or compatible partner because male and female both the parents are involved and both of them are going to produce the gametes and these gametes must come together and for that purpose in case of angiosperm the female gamete is non-motile and male gamete is also non-motile but by using some mechanism it is dispersed it is we can say proceeded it is uh, sent to the female gamete for the success of sexual reproduction obviously it is nothing but the fertilization so basic function of flower is to ensure sexual reproduction by not only producing gamete but as well as they are dispersible to compatible partner then if we see structurally a typical flower is produced from floral bud containing parenchymatous apical meristem which forms the floral axis. Now here you can remember that there are two types of buds the vegetative bud as well as floral bud. Now both these buds will contain the apical meristem but in the floral buds the apical meristem is converted to the reproductive part flowering part and that's why typically Every flower is produced from a flor uh, floral bud containing parenchymatous apical meristem which forms the floral axis. Now the floral axis if we consider it consists of here you can see in the photograph elongated stalk like structure. Now that elongated stalk like structure is called as a pedicel and the second part at the tip of the peduncle at the tip of the pedicel a disc like or knob like structure is produced and usually it is referred as a thalamus and thalamus is nothing but the base of the flower. If we consider the thalamus it represents condensed shoot and it can be recognized by presence of nodes and internodes. Now that is very important feature of a node shoot system or we can say the stem. How we can recognize stem? It is due to presence of nodes and internodes and both these nodes internodes they can be seen on the thalamus and that's why thalamus is the given the status of the shoot or the modified stem. At each stem of this thalamus floral leaves they are specially called as sporophylls are produced in the form of circles generally they are referred as vulves. Now these sporophylls are actually the modified leaves which are produced at the nodes. For neat purpose you should remember that these vulves 
are actually modified leaves and they are, that's why they are called as the sporophylls. Now typically angiospermic flower it include or it consists of four whorls of the sporophylls. The first one is calyx, the second one is corolla, the third one is androsium and the fourth one is gynosium. Here in this particular sketching you can able to see that four whorls are there, the calyx, the corolla, these are the androsium and the centrally placed gynosium is there. As far as these four whorls are concerned, they are divided into two groups. The first one is called as accessory whorl or they are called as non-essential whorl. And these non-essential whorls, they include the calyx as well as corolla. Now calyx and corolla, they don't play any direct role in sexual reproduction as they are not playing any direct role. Obviously, they are called as accessory or they are called as non-essential whorls. The remaining two whorls, that is androsium and gynosium, these are the two whorls that perform the role of male and female and that's why they are compulsory, they are essential and that's why they are the prime whorls. So two types of whorl, accessory, they don't take direct part in the reproduction and as the essential that play important role, direct role in the sexual reproduction. Four whorls are there. If you see one by one of them, the first one is called as calyx and very easily it can be recognized. It is the outermost whorl of the flower. And if you see this calyx, it is made up of member. The individual members of the calyx, they are called as sepals. Now these sepals, they may be fused. As you can see in this photograph, the calyx is fused to form a tubular structure, funnel-like structure. In that condition, it is called as gamosepalus. Gamo means fused and sepalus means sepal. So gamosepalus where the sepals are fused together to form a funnel-like structure. And very commonly you can see that in the plants like hibiscus as well as in datura. In case of other plants, here in this particular photograph you can see the separated Petal, uh, sepals are there. Now these sepals are remaining separate and when they are free, they are called as polysepalus. Very commonly you can see in the strawberries, in the rose or even in the brinjal, the sepals are free, they are called as polysepalus. Usually these are green in color, but occasionally in certain cases it is observed that the sepals, they become colored, they develop some coloration and in that condition they appear like, look like petals and that's why they are called as petaloid sepals. Mind it well, petaloid sepals, petal-like sepals and very commonly you can observe in the plants like lily. If you see the flower of lily, it is quite difficult to distinguish between sepals and petals because sepals are also colored and they are called as sepaloid, uh, petaloid sepals. And then if we see the basic function of calyx, definitely it is protection of the inner walls, particularly in the bird condition in the early phase of the life and later on it is responsible for photosynthesis to produce the organic food material. Now if we see the second whorl, the second whorl is called as corolla. Now this corolla, it appears like crown, crown of the queen and that's why it is called as corolla. And definitely it is number two, it is inner to the calyx. And if you see the individual members of the corolla, they are called as petals. Now these are petals, just like calyx, they may be fused as you can see in this particular flower of Ipomia or Datura, they are fused together and this condition where the petals are fused, the condition is called as gamopetalus. Example, Ipomia or you can use Datura, right? Then, as far as the other varieties are concerned, they may have free petals like that of the rose. Here each and every petal can be separated. So the petals are free. The condition is called as polypetalus. Polypetalus common example is rose. Usually the petals are attractively colored. But occasionally sometime here you can see in the second photograph, the petals are also green in color. And as the petals are green in color, they are called as sepaloid petals. They are called as sepaloid petals and most commonly you can see them in the plants like Amborella. So sepaloid petal is another different concept. Then if you see the few plants, they have fragrance or others may have nectaries as accessory parts for the petals. And these are acting as attractive devices for pollination for attraction of the insect pollinating agents. Then in certain plants, in certain flower, you find that the calyx and corolla, it cannot be distinguished and when it is not distinguished or it is replaced by a single whorl, that single whorl is called as perianth. 
See the name peri ant. Peri means periphery. Ant means anther. Androsium. Just outside the androsium and that's why they are called as peri ant. The individual members of the peri ant, they are called as tepals. Calyx, they contain sepal. Corolla, they contain petal. And peri ant, they contain tepals. Now these are tepals, generally most of the time they are colorless. But definitely they will contain enormous number of nectaries as well as the fragrance producing glands. Why? Because most of the plants in which perianth are present, they blossom at night and secondly, they are pollinated by insects and insects are easily getting attracted towards the white color as well as the fragrance and nectaries. So perianth is the optional verb when calyx and corolla cannot be distinguished, perianth is there. Then essential world number one, it is androsium. Now it is the third world from outside and definitely it is inner to the corolla. And this androsium, it is also referred as the male whirl and it is made up of modified reproductive whirls. They are called as microsporophylls. Now these microsporophylls, these are also remembered as, they are also termed as anthers. And if you see a single anther in this particular photograph, you can able to see the anthers where you can have three parts very easily you can identify. This is the first one that is called as anther. The second one is called as connective and the third one elongated part is there that is called as filament. So a typical stamen, it consists of three components. The first one, it is the anther lobes. The second one is a connecting part that is connective, parenchymate is connective and the third part elongated structure that orient the anther to the particular height in the flower that is called as filament. If we see a flower, it may show the anthers and stamen, they are completely free. As you can see in this particular photograph, these stamens are completely free, independent and that condition is called as polyandrous. Very commonly you can see that once again in the dhatura plant. Then in case of certain flower, they may be fused. And that fusion, it will give rise to two more varieties of the stamens. The first one, they are called as syngenaceous. Now, what is syngenaceous? Where anthers are fused, but the filaments are free. Anthers are fused, filaments are free. Or the second condition is called as synandrous, where both anthers as well as filaments are fused together. Now, the condition where anthers are fused, the filaments are free, that is called as syngenaceous. And when both anthers as well as filament they are fused, that is called as synandrous condition. Very commonly you can see that in the calotropis plant. Then if we see these filaments, these filaments may be fused in different fashion. Sometimes the filaments of all the anther they get fused in that condition, it is called as monodelphus. And many a time it is observed that the um, uh, stamen from the flower, they will form two groups. That condition is called as diadelphus or even it may have uh, multiple number of groups that is said to be the polyadelphus condition. The basic idea is adelphi. Adelphi means fusion of stamen. What kind of fusion is there? That type of adelphi will be there. It may monadelphus, one group, diadelphus, two group or even more they are called as polyadelphus condition. And then if we see the fourth one. Fourth one is called as gynosium. Obviously it is the innermost wall. And again, it is made up of modified reproductive leaves. They are called as megasporophylls. Now, these megasporophylls individually, they are forming the carpels or they are forming the pistils. Now, if you see a single structure of pistil, you can very easily recognize the three portion. The uppermost one, it is called a stigma. The second one is called as elongated structure called a sty. And towards the base, just above the thalamus, it will possess the ovary. Now when a flower contain only one pistil or only one carpel, it is called as monocarpillary and when monocarpillary condition is there, you can remember it by mango. So mango, they are representing the monocarpillary condition. But in other flowers, it is observed that they may be fused and when multiple number of carpels are fused together, the condition is called as polycarpillary. Now these polycarpillary they may show different situation and in that condition if all the stamens sorry all the carpels they are fused but they remain separate in that condition it is said to be the apocarpus you can see the legume plants as an example or they may be all fused together and when all the ovaries 
all the style, all the stigma, they are fused. That is called as syncarpus condition. And the common example you can remember is orange plant. So here you can see the separation of the ovaries or separation of the ovary style stigma that is called as apocarpus condition. And when they are fused together, they are called as syncarpus. Then a flower like a vegetative shoot, like stem, like branch, it may develop in the exile of small leaf. Here you can see a small leaf is there and in the exile of that small leaf, these are floral, floral birds or flowers they develop and these smaller leaves, they are called as bracts. And when the flower is having bract, obviously it is called as bracteate flower. Or opposite to that, the flower may not have the bract and in that condition it is called as ebracteate flower. So bracteate flower containing bract, ebracteate doesn't contain the bract. And if we see the flower, they are produced on an elongated stalk that is called as pedicelle. And when the pedicelle is elongated, very easily it can be recognized that type of flower they are called as pedicellate flowers or they are called as stalked flower. Here you can see elongated pedicelle is there. But in other flowers, it is observed that the flowers do not possess pedicelle or pedicelle do not develop. And when the pedicel do not develop, it is called as a non-pedicellate flower or it is called as a sessile flower. So pedicellate flower as well as sessile flower, these are we can say two varieties. Then a flower with all the four valves, calyx, corolla, androsium, gynosium, if all of them are present, then it is called as a complete flower that is containing androsium, gynosium, calyx as well as corona. But if a flower, it may contain either calyx or corolla or androsium or gynosium means either of the world if it is absent then the flower is called as imperfect flower or it is called as unisexual flower unisexual flower it may contain the androsium that is male or staminate flower as it contain only the male that is stamen and that's why female is absent gynosium is absent or vice versa a female flower is there a pistillate flower is there where only the carpels are present, androsium are completely absent. And when both the essential valves are absent, many times it is observed that androsium, gynosium, both of them are absent. In that condition, the flower is called as a neuter. The flower is called as a neuter. Then the plants which we are both the type of unisexual flower, staminate as well as Pistillate means containing androsium as well as gynosium. They are called as monoecious flower. One flower will contain both androsium and gynosium. That is called as monoecious flower or that is called as monoecious plant. The most common one you can have maize as well as in cucurbita. Where both male as well as female flower they are present on the single plant body. Then if you see a vein, a plant possesses only one type of unisexual flower either male or female, that is called as dioecious plant. Now this dioecious plant, it may be mulberry or it may be date palm or very commonly you can remember papaya. In papaya, we know the male plants and female plants are separate, means they are dioecious. Some of the plant, they may possess three types of flower, male as well as female as well as neuter. And when bisexual, staminate as well as neuter flowers are present, definitely they are named as, they are termed as polygamous plant. The most common example, mango. It contains three types of male, female as well as bisexual flower as well as the neuter. And that's why they are called as polygamous. Example is mango. Friends, this is the basic story for the morphology of flower as an important part of the sexual reproduction in angiosperm. And if you find these particular information, these video helpful for your preparation, please like, subscribe and share and strike the bell button so that you can get easily noticed. For the time being, from the facts in biology, I am Anand Joshi, thanking you. Thank you very much.